Good morning, everyone. Today we are continuing with our Get to Uni series and talking about a subject which I am kind of the polar opposite to as a mathematician. We're talking about studying English at the University of Exeter. And I have with us um, two amazing people, Professor Sinead, who's an associate professor in American and Atlantic literature uh, at the English department, and Emma Hall, who's a second year student in BA studying uh, for the English degree at, at, at Exeter. She's also a radio show presenter um, at the Expression FM, I think. Um, yes, we'll radio about. station. Um, so, Professor, I want to kind of kick it off with you. Um, international students tend to not know much about like very pure um, subject-specific degrees. We often go for things like engineering and doctors and lawyers and stuff like that. So, could you just like, like kind of briefly tell me what is it like studying an English degree? What's it all about? Okay, uh, thanks for inviting me, uh, Zubair. I'm very pleased to be here to be talking about English at Exeter. Um, so basically, um, you know, traditionally speaking, I suppose an English degree would be about the study of English literature. Mm -hmm. But actually, as time has uh, continued, and particularly at Exeter, where we're a very large department, um, English literary studies encompass a, encompasses a very wide range of topics. Uh, so, of course, it's about the, the the history of English literature from sort of Beowulf to Virginia Woolf, from, um, you know, from origins to the, the present moment. But also uh, we study comics and graphic novels. We study, um, we, we have digital humanities approaches to literature. We have medical humanities approaches to literature. We have several colleagues who teach creative writing. We're a department of English and film. So students can take film studies modules if they like. Um, so I guess, uh, Eng what does English at Exeter mean? Well, English at Exeter means a very, very broad range of topics. And because we're a big department, we can offer um, a very broad range of, of topics and expertise. Hmm. So Emma, what attracted you to to study this course? Was it what what was that happening at school that led you that you were going to yeah, this is what I'm going to do at uni? So um, I was very very lucky in um, having brilliant teachers at A level who just some of the best people I've ever had teach me. Like the teacher that did a dramatic reading of a Christina Rossetti poem, kicking a chair across a classroom. Um, so um, it really I really had a passion for the subject already but I was sort of caught between doing an English degree and a politics degree. But with the course here at Exeter, um, especially in first year, there is a module called Approaches to Criticism, which, mm -hmm. in, so you are sitting in your first lecture, having read Marx and things like that for your reading, and you get such a broad range of, um, of sort of almost other subjects encompassed in your degree, because, um, like when you look at different critical approaches, you're looking at different sort of political perspectives mm. and you look at cultural contexts and historical contexts. So it's like doing history and you get so much out of this one degree. And like, and also the modules are just so interesting. And as Sinead said, it's, there's such a big department. You can always, like you can usually find like an expert in whatever you're interested in and that everyone's so easy to like just come and talk to. So I've, it's, just the best. I love it. <laughs> That's amazing. So it's it's crazy just just like hearing the first few minutes is like that. Obviously, it's language and literature is such a big part of it, but there's also so much about interpretation and its application in the real world. So like thinking about historical stories, thinking about um, real world political impact that it's having. Um, is that what? So as as you kind of go through the degree, maybe you could tell me a little bit about the structure. Um, you refer to the first year being quite broad. Does that kind of, is it there's some sort of specialization kind of funnel that happens to this? Yeah, shall I, shall I pick up on this one and then Emma can jump in if she likes. Um, so uh, the, the structure of the degree uh, is, you know, it's a three year degree um, unless you do study abroad, which maybe we want to talk about later. You do 120 credits each year of your degree. Um, mm -hmm. And in the first year, there are a number of compulsory uh, modules and the the reason why they're compulsory is that at, in the first year we're kind of laying the foundation um and and giving you equipping you with the skills that you'll need to 
to proceed uh, successfully throughout the degree. So yeah. there's a compulsory module on, you know, uh, the, the history of ling English literature from, you know, from Genesis right up to Frankenstein. And there's also, as Emma says, the approaches to criticism module, which is, as she described really well, almost like an intellectual history module. It's like the history of, of particular strands of thought, whether that's Marxism, feminism, eco-criticism, etc. And as she says, it's this, it's very interdisciplinary, the application of those kinds of skills. Yeah. Then as you proceed through the degree, you have more and more choice actually. Um, and um, so you may want to kind of build your degree in the second and third years around certain specializations. You know, if you really gravitate towards medieval literature, you can absolutely choose modules which reflect that interest. Mm -hmm. Or you can stay very broad. If you still like to do a Victorian module here and a graphic novel module over there, you can still absolutely do that. So it's it's nicely flexible in the second and third years. And in any given year of your degree, you can take 30 credits outside of your degree program, uh, mm -hmm. which also gives you, you know, let's say you have a, um, a passion for, as Emma said, politics, you know, you could go off and do um, a politics module in your second year if you wanted to, or indeed any year of your degree. Mm. And so coming to the end of your third year, are you going to be writing a dissertation? And uh, how is that kind of like, what's the culmination of that there? Yeah, so the dissertation in English is compulsory. Um, you, uh, you, that can be if, if you've built up, if you've kind of followed almost a little pathway through the degree, not officially, but unofficially in creative writing, you can also do a creative writing dissertation. So you may do one just in literary studies or you may do one in creative writing. Um, and that is an entire module's worth. So that's 30 credits. Uh, mm -hmm. Students undertake that in the second term of uh, their third year. Um, and I actually co-convened the dissertation. So I know a lot about that module. Okay. Uh, students write an 8,000 word piece. They produce an, um, a project which is um, supervised. So they're in consultation with a, with a colleague in the English department. But the idea is that they are growing more and more independent of, as researchers as the degree progresses to the yes. extent that the dissertation then allows them to showcase their brilliant independent research. And sorry, I'm just going to keep <laughs> drilling away at you. So you talk about these kind of two strands, the creative and the critical. Um, is that something that's like baked into the degree? Are people coming into the degree who are very focused on just, you know, I want to be a, a creative person and I want to write something at the end of it. Um, how is that kind of structured in the degree? So um, there's two ways of answering that. So there is a combined English and creative writing degree that's mm -hmm. come on track this year. So that's for people who really want to do 50 50 um, okay. literary studies and creative writing. Um, there are people, of course, like Emma, who are on single honours English, who actually just want to tip their, dip their toes in the water um, of creative writing. And you can do that from the very first year. You could do 15 credits introduction to creative writing it, in level one as an option. You don't, if you didn't like, don't like it, you never have to do creative writing ever again. If you love it, you can then build on that as the degree progresses. So there's a lot of flexibility in terms of kind of, because a lot of students have never had an opportunity to do creative writing before they come yeah. to university. They can kind of try it out in the first year and see, see whether they like it or not. So Emma, coming to you, what have you been kind of like, so you're in your second year, you've started to kind of see what you're enjoying most. Where are you heading? Um, mm -hmm. I'm still doing the kind of pick and choose because genuinely all the modules are so good. So we, um, for my second year, you can choose four 30 credit modules. It's kind of the main structure most people go for. So I had to choose four. And I think at, when I started looking, I had a list of 10 that I just had to like narrow down. That's not even all the options. That's, that's just all the ones I wanted. Mm -hmm. um, so last year um, for my optional modules, I did creative writing and rethinking Shakespeare, which I loved. Um, and then this year I've still gone quite random. So I'm doing American literature from 1776 onwards, which Sinead teaches on. Um, and then Desire and Power, which is Renaissance literature, mm -hmm. 1570 to 1640. And then next term I'm doing romanticism and culture crisis and ecology in a post-colonial world <laughs> um so you can each do the quite a lot of like, the, each of the modules sound like books on their own like i could just sit down and read about it it sounds amazing 
yeah, I'm very excited about next term as well. Yeah. So and so, just to check in, are you are you happy to keep this like broad perspective and just be like picking and choosing, or do you have like a very specific interest? Um, when you think about something like your dissertation, do you want to like be having that holistic perspective and taking it into a kind of a practical worldly application, or how is that coming in your mind? Uh, with regard to dissertation, I already have a document on my computer of dissertation ideas. It's partly arising out of the fact that um, doing, especially in a couple of my modules last year, I had ideas for essays, but then um, when we had set questions, I was like, okay, those sound easier. Um, so I've just sort of kept them going. Uh, so if we go on dissertation ideas, I think I'd go Shakespeare because I'm a real Shakespeare nerd. Okay. Um, but um, I don't know if I'm, I don't know how much I'll narrow down next year because I think I always think it's really nice to have um, like when you're going through your readings, like mm. um, like this term I've been reading sort of combination of like American literature. So like I've read the Declaration of Independence and like um, and what were we reading this week? I've completely forgotten. Oh my gosh, I've got the seminar in a minute. Um, Claudia like, Rankin. Yes, I have read it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I'm um, reading sort of like American poetry, especially to do with race. And then at the same time, I've been reading like um, feminist or sort of kind of feminist polemics from the 16th century. Hmm. So like, I, I think it's important to have that variety just so you kind of remember what you're looking at, and remembering what the history behind other things are, if that Got makes it. sense. Yeah. Um, and just building off of that, because you've, you've talked a lot about reading, uh, I'd love to learn more about the because it's, I'm sure studying English modules is very different to like me sitting with the math modules and doing problem sheets. So tell me how that is about like um, actually studying them and then also revising them when it comes during the end of the year for exams. So um, it's it depends on your module, but you're generally reading around a book a week um, or definitely a text a week. So they're not necessarily going to be full books. It might be like read um, this set of poems or um, read this sort of critical text. And then um, when you come to second year, then um, there's normally more critical reading to go with the text. So like you read you read the book and then you read, um, you've normally got some set or suggested articles that go alongside it. Um, when it comes to revising them, um, <laughs> it's hard, um, <laughs> but, um, for me personally, I found particularly doing summer exams online um, due to the pandemic last year, um, I found you're kind of you're rereading the text, you're finding more critical approaches and you're sort of going through breaking down the text into sort of themes or um, sort of motifs that the kind of thing that you would be asked about for an essay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the kind of rough structure of the work. I think yeah what sense. about like during the year is it um so you're reading a lot are you what are the kind of I guess a crude words outputs what are you what are you producing are you writing essays are you giving presentations what's that like are you working in a group or individually uh it depends on the module so mm -hmm. um some of so for my two modules this term I've just had my essay deadlines so um you normally produce a formative um, around sort of week four to week five, which is normally um, a shorter essay in some form. So for one of my modules, it was a critical commentary on like a section of one of the texts. And for the other, it was a critical synopsis of two articles. Mm -hmm. um, and then the essays are generally quite, um, they're, qu they're quite chunky, um, but kind of. Uh, so they were 2,000 words each. So um, you're generally producing, it really depends because some modules um, you have exams. So I'll have four exams at the end of term three, which I'm not looking forward to. Um, so, I'll, um, so some have exams, some have coursework, some, um, a couple of my ones last year included presentations on your essay topic. Mm -hmm. um, and one of my modules next term involves um, a gr like a group project with like creating an anthology um, that's for romanticism. So it really depends, but that it's one of the really great things about it that there's such a huge variety of what you can yeah. be doing. It's not right. I'm studying English. I will be writing essays for the next three years. I mean, you will, but there'll be a bit of variety in that. 
Okay. Yeah, that sounds amazing. I, I was just just hearing you. It's like there's lots of different ways you're you're doing the same thing, right? You're presenting, you're talking, you're you're um, working with a group. You're also doing stuff on your own. You're reading loads. So um, to, to talk more about variety, what is there, Professor? Um, so I know that there's some courses which offer like years in industry, and I'm sure I don't know if there's an industry for English. But what what are ways that students can kind of like um, expand their kind of degree program and have more kind of cool features to it? Um, okay, so there's a number of ways. Um, I guess one way which perhaps Emma might talk about is through kind of different extracurricular activities on campus. Like a, lo a lot of our students are involved in, in student journalism um, on TV, radio, or the newspaper expose. Yeah. Um, so there, are, th that's, you know, a number of our students are very involved in that. And those would be students, I guess, who aspire to go into, into the media after they graduate. Um, in terms of kind of more structured forms of, of placements and so forth, um, there um, you can there are different iterations of the the standard BA English degree. So there there would be BA English with study abroad, BA okay. English with employment experience, or BA English with employment experience abroad. And in all of those cases, you would spend uh, the the degree would end up being four years, and you would spend the third year either studying or abroad or working abroad or working um, in in the UK. Um, and the employment experience programs, you do need to find your own placement, but the university is there to kind of support you through that process. Um, there's also a, a humanities. So the English is, is at Exeter, English at Exeter is part of the College of Humanities, which includes other subjects like history and theology and religion, the, the mm -hmm. drama, those kinds of subjects. Um, there's a humanities um, uh, um, work, um, in the humanities in the workplace module, which you can take, um, and that also includes placements. So there are opportunities to kind of um, either formally structure your degree so that yeah. you're studying abroad or working abroad, and then there are other ways of just doing it on a on a more local level, like getting involved in clubs and societies or doing that humanities in the workplace module or whatever it happens to be. Gotcha. So Emma, um, as, as professors kind of kind of referred you to, um, mm -hmm. you run uh, a radio show. So how is that like? What are some other things that you're up to alongside your degree um, in terms of different societies and programs that are available? Um, I do quite a lot. I think I think I do five societies this year. What was that last year? Um, so I'm on the committee of the debating society. So I am the publicity secretary and the media secretary. Um, so that's involved in running two to three events a week. Um, and then also um, I, I do radio. So um, for me, that involved having to do a term of training and then um, you apply for your show so um, I'm on air usually an hour a week plus um, a news show with other people and I essentially have free reign within sort of within sort of guidelines of um, what we talk about so I'll sit there and chat about politics for an hour normally and play some music um, Thanks. but yeah I, I, I'm not doing any of the sort of employment experience or um, study abroad but um, I think there's a lot you can do even if you're just doing your straight three years. But, like there's so much, there's so much to do on campus. Like even in the pandemic, a lot of societies are still going online, and like you're still able to like do so much even if you are sitting at a screen like this. Yeah. So as you mentioned, and you brought up the elephant in the room, how is it studying <laughs> um, during this kind of lockdown period? Um, what have what, what's the university done for you and, and have, have you found any challenges or things that you worked out? Um, I feel like the English department rose to the challenge the best of most of the departments I know <laughs> of. Um, like, because I've had some people, especially with exams, like the people who had, there were three options of how you had exams. And mm -hmm. one of them was like um, how they timed the papers. We had 24 hours to sort of accommodate for anyone who was like international students. Yeah. So you yeah. didn't, because otherwise people could, and in other departments, apparently people were up at like 2 a.m. Um, because they were in another time zone having to do their yeah. exam. But um, it's it's been good. So um, we, have, we have it structured in the English department as 
you have um, sort of mini lectures that are pre-recorded and we can watch in our own time. So um, you've just basically to need to have done them and the study questions that go with them um, by the time you come to your seminar, um, which could be any time in the week. So I find it's not the easiest thing to structure because you're like, I, I technically have no obligation to get out of bed yet, but <laughs> which I think is a normal student struggle. Um, but yeah, I think I think it's one of the things that I think it has done very well. Sorry, that was my doorbell. Um, so um, one of the things it's done very well is um, I feel like it's opened a, a sort of an avenue of communication between um, between staff and students in a way that we didn't quite have because previously. Um, if you needed to go speak to um, a tutor about it, you had to like go all the way up to like the Queen's building and like find their office and everything. And that can be a bit nerve wracking, like sometimes, if, especially if you don't know them very well. Yeah. But instead, it, you can just email them and be like, hi, can I come speak to you about my essay? I'm a bit confused. And they'll just sit on a Zoom call with you and chat with you for like 10, 15 minutes and layer up all your questions. So I feel like that's one sort of, barrier that the pandemic's kind of helped with a little bit because it's yeah. sort of taken the nerves out of it like you know standing outside the office feeling like you're at the head teacher's office at school <laughs> yeah um I can imagine. The, yeah so the only thing that you miss a little bit is the structure um sort of like a, oh i've got to be on campus at this time mm. um but i feel like you i feel like you can make make your own like if you are someone who needs structure it's very easy to structure everything yourself just as long as you've got the motivation to do it yeah but motivation is the hardest thing to get um uh, professor i wanted to talk a little bit about something you referred to a little earlier which is kind of employment um what does an english degree like look like to the rest of the world and what are you able to achieve with it well I mean, of course, you're preaching to the choir here, so I will try and uh, convert uh, those of you that are listening. Yeah. Um, I think an English degree is very valuable to employers, and indeed, that's been proven through various studies as well. The reason being that graduates uh, of in you know, graduates with a degree in English are excellent communicators. They are able to. Uh, um, not only read but understand and interpret large quantities of text in quickly and accurately and th that is actually an invaluable skill in any number of careers whether it's publishing law um the media you know whatever it happens to be and that 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 um ability to negotiate complex language in a world of fake news and so on and so forth yeah. That, that skill to be able to kind of stand back and interpret and form a judgment based on what's written down is an invaluable skill, I think, not only for, for future employment, but actually just for living in this world. And uh, you're absolutely correct. Um, the current climate in the world has, has more than ever shown that we need to be very critical about what we read and how we interpret stuff. And I'm sure that everything that English is about is about interpreting critically. Uh, so that's amazing. Um, what about like uh, through your years as, as uh, teaching, what have you seen some of your students go out to, be, to do and become? So that's a good question. Lots of things. Um, some students go on to further study in quite a variety of different things, uh, as I say. So some go on and do an MA in English. Um, some go on and do law or other you know, conversion courses of that sort. So students sometimes go into law, which, as I just said, I think is quite a cognate thing because it's about the interpretation of text. Yeah. Um, st many students go into publishing. Many students go into the media, uh, radio, TV and so on. Um, and teaching, I think, is another common uh, destination for, for students that have graduated um, with us at Exeter. Yeah. And Emma, what, what is what's kind of like, what are you imagining that you'll be doing in two years time when you're finished with your degree? Um, <laughs> definitely not in the midst of a crisis about what I'm going to do after my degree. Uh, I'm planning on doing a master's at some point, um, potentially in English or possibly in journalism and then um, going into the media. Um, but currently teaching is actually kind of something I've been looking into, um, whether that would potentially be 
whether I'd want to do that at sort of um, school level or potentially like sort of at A level to university yeah. level. Um, but I don't know. I'm only a second year. I'm not, I'm allowed to not <laughs> completely know. <laughs> Absolutely, don't worry about it. Yeah, you absolutely have all the rights not to know. I, I uh, you know, you can even graduate and still not know what you're doing, so it's all good. Um, and I guess, I guess what I want to like, um, we're getting kind of closer to the end of the session, and I, I, I do want to talk about this last bit, which is about applications and prospective students. Um, so, Professor, what do you look for? And you may not be involved in admissions or not, but I'm just thinking about the kind of the characteristics, personality traits that you are you think suit this kind of degree and you you're excited when you see like a student that has those those kind of uh, things with them when they apply what are those i think what we like to see is students who are passionate about reading you know it really is as simple as that mm -hmm. um and it doesn't matter you know i think sometimes um i chat to prospective students or applicants at open days and i sometimes feel that they're trying to impress me by saying you know that they're really uh you know have just finished reading finnegan's wake or or some you know vastly complicated work of, of english literature i really don't care about that i just want you to be passionate about reading whatever that is you know are you passionate about um romance novels are you passionate about um young adult fiction um are you passionate like em is about shakespeare you know it can run the gamut um from from whatever you think of as as trashy and 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 i myself and my colleagues don't subscribe to any view of some text that's trashy and others as not you know we'd rather just do that people were passionate about reading whatever it is that's what we like to see genuinely mm. and is that something that should come across um for example in their personal statements um yeah yeah that's where yeah exactly tell us tell us on your personal statement what you like to read and why amazing that's such an easy personal statement to write mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, Emma, how did how was it for you when you were applying to to uni? What what were the what do you think actually made you stand out and get to the degree in the university you wanted to? Um, I'm trying to remember what I put in my personal statement. <laughs> the only thing I can remember from my personal statement is the book that I said I'd finished and I'd only read about eighty percent of it. Yeah. Um, so, um, what was that, Emma? Um. I had only got about 600 pages into Anna Karenin. And That's still then, pretty impressive. And the annoying thing was, I loved it. I just put it down for too long because um, A levels got very hectic. And then it was, and then, um, and then I just realized I'd put it down for too long. I was like, I can't start this again. And the personal <laughs> statement is due next week. And this one sounds good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But um, yeah, I do remember the moment I found out I got into Exeter because I was sitting at my kitchen table and you get the email from track bit, um, yep. or from UCAS being like, oh, it's updated. And you go on to, and I'd had a couple of my offers come in already, but I was sort of waiting on Exeter. And I remember I jumped off my chair and like shrieked. It was one of those moments, I'm so excited and there's no one home to tell. So like oh. everyone got home, I was like, I've got in, I've got in. It was like the one I wanted the most. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of how I knew that this was definitely the right place um, because there was sort of two courses I was choosing to be in here and somewhere else. And um, and sort of looking, I was sort of looking at them again and I was always like, that's the one I'm waiting out for. Like, that's one that I think is right. And then I could tell from my reaction when I got in, I was like, yeah, mm -hmm. that's where I'm going. Amazing. You, you, you cut down the choices very quickly by looking at yourself. Yeah. <laughs> um, amazing. And so... I guess the, the final question I have, um, Professor, is about, are there any opportunities for bursaries and scholarships that students can apply to um, to support, especially if they don't come from you know, backgrounds which support which can support them that well? Yes, so there is a funding database on the study site at the University of Exeter. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if there's a way of me giving you the URL afterwards to post or whatever, but yeah. yes, there is a funding database and you can search by country of origin, you can search by what particular type of scholarship you're looking for, whether it's a sports one or a global engagement one, there are, there are a number of, there's a, a database that, that, I, that I can direct um, prospective applicants to. Amazing, that's really, really um, empowering to hear. So thank you for that. Um, I think I've had an amazing uh, deep dive into what studying an English degree would be like. Uh, especially from a very like different degree that I did study and I, I think I'd for some reason I'd still enjoy it like it, it, it was like it's the polar opposite in many ways um, but when I was applying 
what I was thinking of either going down the strand of going with math or classics. So I was a polar opposite even at the, at the get go. Uh, thank you so much, both of you, for sharing such amazing insights and stories to tell. Thank you very much. Thank really you. nice to meet you. Likewise. Uh, thank you for all our live listeners, and hopefully we'll see you soon with another unique course. So, bye. Take care. Bye.